Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and I'm also a socialist and would ordinarily be quite excited about Labour's plans for power should it be able to form a majority after the next month's general elections. But sadly, the plans are probably just a pipe dream because of Jeremy Corbyn's Brexit position. But before I get started, if you'd like to receive notifications for upcoming videos, then please subscribe to the channel and also click the bell notification next to it. So we have a really weird situation in UK politics at the moment where lots of features all aligned to make a perfect storm, which we call Brexit. Due to the weak and arrogant leadership of David Cameron, we ended up with a Brexit referendum that was ultimately lost. Now, there was no public call for such a referendum before. Uh, there has been one since because there isn't actually a majority in the country that want to leave the EU. And when you consider the following four factors, even an uncharismatic leader of the Labour Party like Corbyn should have been able to just walk into Downing Street by now. The first factor is that Brexit has already destroyed a huge number of jobs, many of them well paid. The government has sought to keep a lid on the news by fiddling the employment figures, something they've been criticised for by a number of organisations, including the Office for National Statistics. The real unemployment uh, figure has been judged to be two to three times higher. But you can't disguise it forever. I mean, we're always getting news of businesses leaving the UK or being, you know, having planned investment pulled on it. Uh, we're not exactly getting news of new businesses coming over, though. The math should be simple to work out. Eventually, you start to realise there is a massive net loss of investment due to Brexit. And recent news has only been of rising unemployment. You know, you can't hide the impact of unemployment from those who have lost their jobs or are about to, and, and they have voting powers. In addition, also on an almost daily basis, we're hearing of businesses saying that they will be leaving if we go through with Brexit and other ones like Tesla uh, saying that they're not going to come in the first place because of Brexit. The second factor is that the architects of Brexit have no problem admitting that it was all lies during the Brexit referendum. Yes, they still have supporters who now say that Brexit is worth losing their jobs over and that it's totally fine that they're being lied to by those they support. But for the more sane members of the population, finding out you were lied to does tend to make you think you might want to change your mind. The third factor is that there have been some serious criminal investigations into these same architects of Brexit and they've been delayed or blocked by the complicit Tory government. However, the leader of the opposition to a minority government had the power to force a public inquiry into all this. With a public inquiry, Jeremy Corbyn would have been able to make the current government look like the crooks they are in the full glare of the public eye. The Tories would have been unelectable and not only would those ministers be completely discredited, but so too would Brexit. Which, of course, is why Corbyn has never pushed for an inquiry. He has wanted to discredit the Conservatives, sure, but not if it means discrediting Brexit itself. But he's found it impossible to separate the the two things. It's obvious enough, really. Brexit is fundamentally a conservative concept. It doesn't help people on the left, centre, or even centre-right. It helps literally the 1% with enough wealth to benefit. And the fourth factor, finally, there are loads of people who are prioritising Brexit over everything else at the ballot box. This is why the Liberal Democrats are recovering from their 2015 mauling uh, so well. Most people who have switched their support to the Liberal Democrats haven't the faintest idea what their policies are on anything else. They just know that they're very, very anti-Brexit. But that doesn't matter. They're against Brexit. That's all they need to know. That's why they switched their support to them. The same polls that accurately predicted the results of the EU elections in May also noted that if Labour had committed to a referendum with Remain as an option, a position they've now adopted, then they would have won more seats than anyone else. They would have cleaned up, in fact. Instead, they lost half their MEPs when they should have been gaining them. You know, as I say, Labour have now moved to that position. By, but it's had to be done by dragging Corbyn, kicking and screaming all the way. But it was too late for those elections, and their position still hasn't firmed up into the Remain position that the party wants it to for this general election either. And also, after all this time, there's a lot of people who've permanently lost trust in Corbyn. Some of them have said they've permanently lost faith in the party altogether, although I do think a different leadership at some point in the future would be able to get some of that back. 
Labour's muddled position on Brexit now, whereby they won't even say how they're going to campaign in a future referendum, has meant that the Liberal Democrats are still seen as the major rep Remain party, in England at least, but that is where the vast majority of the population and Westminster seats reside. If Labour were fully committed to Remain, they would be on for a majority in next month's elections. We wouldn't have to worry about splitting the Remain votes between different parties. It would go to Labour. And, and that in turn would mean that Corbyn's socialist agenda could actually be enacted in full. Uh, there'd be nothing to stop him. Whether he really makes it stand the test of time where he's given the chance as he wants is another matter. But he'd be Prime Minister and able to pass the legislation for everything in his manifesto. He'd, he'd just have to abandon his beloved Brexit, which does nothing to help that agenda, only hinders it in fact. But this is the problem of electing a leader a man who has never thought about anything in 50 years. As pro-EU Labour, you know, if, if a pro-EU Labour leader, even one that wasn't a brilliant campaigner, they'd be killing it now in the polls. And imagine what a charismatic as well as pro-EU Labour leader could do. There was for a time, I'm not sure if it's still prevalent, there was this thing where people were trying to defend Corbyn's position by saying that he wanted us to leave the EU because EU rules prevent him implementing his socialist programme. But it doesn't. Uh, and the reason why I say I don't think it's prevalent anymore because it has long since been discredited. For example, Corbyn wants to nationalise the railway. Yeah, no problem. I mean, we've nationalised part of it. The Conservatives have done that on the sly. But Germany, Spain, Portugal, etc. Actually, a number of EU countries have a nationalised railway system. In fact, there are nationalised industries all over the EU. The UK must be the most privatised nation within the EU. And that's nothing to do with the EU, of course. That's because we keep electing Conservative governments who just blame everything on the EU. Something that many other countries in, in the EU manage to avoid because they use proportional representation that stops unrepresentative parties getting majorities in their parliaments. As far as I can tell, and this is a little speculative because it's also baffling, I think Corbyn's opposition to the EU ultimately comes down to his lack of political growth as an adult. In the 1960s, the UK wanted to join the European community for purely economic reasons. Yes, it supported the peace project, but didn't see itself as having any role in that. After all, we don't get invaded, it's only you lot. Other than telling others what to do, they weren't really interested in anything other than the economic benefits. What we wanted was to boost our flagging economy. And many British EU experts have always said that our attitude, even the very pro-European Prime Ministers have had, our attitude to the organisation has been purely mercantile. We haven't really understood the other aspects of it. And as a fervent anti-capitalist, Corbyn opposed this. Yeah, sure, so did a lot of people on the left. But things have changed. It was the case that the right wing were huge supporters of our place in Europe because it's brilliant for business and the left were against it. But this all changed when the EU itself was emerging from the EEC and the EU became more than just a large trading bloc, it became a campaigner for social justice. It even takes on large multinationals, something that should appeal to Corbyn. This is when the far right decided to get serious about ripping the UK out of Europe. The emergence of greater worker protections, clamping down on tax avoidance, all of these sorts of features which are, find favour on the left were doing we're doing the right no good at all. So the opposition to the EU switched from the left wing to the right wing. Socialists love the new European agenda as it's empowering ordinary people and constraining those who see us as simply commodities for their empire of wealth. But Corbyn was left behind, a dinosaur from a time when the socialist objections were still prevalent. And that's the best I can come up with for his objections. They don't stop him being able to implement any policy that he has championed. As far as I can tell from Labour announcements, when you look at everything he wants to do, he's not looking at doing anything that isn't already being doing, done in the EU somewhere. There's some country, at least one, somewhere in the EU, doing what he wants to do. His objection is purely because he has never re-evaluated the situation, or he feels he shouldn't change his mind, because that might imply he was wrong sometime in the past. After all, let's say he gets a majority. Let's say he gets a majority and takes us out of the EU. Let's say he implements a load of his policies and all is well with the world. But the Conservatives are going to be voted back in. It doesn't matter whether it's in five years' time, ten years' time, they are going to come back in. And free from those EU rules, they will tear everything down. 
because nothing Corbyn can do can possibly stand the test of time against a future hostile government. No parliament can tell the next parliament what to do. Literally, our only constraint against any Conservative government are EU rules, not one of which makes the lives of ordinary people worse. Not one Leave supporter has ever been able to name a single EU rule that harms them. Not me, not to anyone. And my worry is this. Corbyn's Brexit position is turning away voters. This means that he will fail. The best case scenario is that Labour becomes the largest party of the election. In other words, he fails less strongly than Johnson. And that is unlikely at the moment, but it could happen. Hope remains. But then what? He still can't implement anything. He'll fall back due to lack of support. And with that failure will go everything he's attached to himself. He will have failed and everything that's associated with him will be part of that failure. His position on Brexit should and probably would go with him. But also his socialist programme. That's my worry. There's a serious danger that people will associate these socialist policies with him, his failure, in the same way that people associate Iraq with Blair's failure. The whole thing becomes tainted in the eyes of the public and a competent Labour leader wanting to replicate that programme will never get a chance as a direct result of Corbyn's taint. And all because of two things. One, Corbyn just wouldn't let his maddening Brexit position drop. Nobody believes in it, not even his own momentum support group. And two, that Labour members thought and think that Corbyn is their only route to a fully socialist Labour programme. They couldn't believe it was possible for another Labour MP, a more intelligent and informed one, to commit to such a programme. They were convinced that all of the other options were just centre-left Blairites, that he's the only one. And so the end result is keeping a Labour leader in power that everyone knows is incompetent. The only one saying otherwise being the same people that thought that the 2017 general election was a magnificent triumph for him, which resulted in a Tory government and has now resulted in Johnson becoming Prime Minister. It has been said before and it will be said again, Brexit devours its own children. It has already done this. It's taken a number of its proponents already and it will take Corbyn unless he's stopped for his own sake, although it's becoming a bit late for that now. But my worry is that it will also devour mainstream socialism. So those are my thoughts. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.